Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, and here's one I've been looking forward to for a long time. Behind me, you will see the remains of a mill. That is a whiting mill, and if you don't know what whiting is, you'll find out by watching this video. There's plenty in this one. We're on the shore of the Humber today, and there is the Humber Bridge behind those trees. Welcome to Hessel. Hessel is a town, civil parish and electoral ward in the East Riding of Yorkshire, five miles west of Kingston-upon-Hull city centre. Geographically, it's a part of a larger urban area consisting of the city of Hull, the town of Hessel and a number of other villages, but it's not part of the city. It's on the north bank of the Humber estuary and is the location of the northern end of the world famous Humber Bridge. According to the 2011 UK Census, Hessel Parish had a population of exactly 15,000, an increase on the 2001 figure of 14,767. Hessel is surrounded by the neighbouring villages of Willoughby, Anleby, Kirkella, Westella, North Ferriby and Swanland. The place name Hessel is first attested to in the Doomsday Book of 1086, where it appears as Hayes. It appears as Hessler in a Danelaw charter from the reign of Henry II between 1154 and 1189, and as Hessel in a Yorkshire charter of 1157. The name is the old Scandinavian Hesley, meaning Hazel Grove. The town is twinned with the French town of Borg de Thizy. You know, this might be a town, but it's certainly got the sort of East Riding Village feel that we're used to seeing. Tight, narrow streets, sometimes windy, bendy, like this one here. This is Swinegate. It still feels like the East Riding, even though it's uh, probably a bit more on the cosmopolitan side, being close to Hull. Hessel is a town in its own right and should not be considered part of the city of Hull. The HU13 postcode that Hessel falls under even has Hessel as its post town. The centre of Hessel is the square. There are many shops and a small bus station, which was refitted in 2007. So there's plenty here in the square. You don't really know where to look first, do you? <laughs> it's all around you. There's plenty of shops and things here. And even the bus station is located here too. Hessel was an important place for shipbuilding. Before 1897, there was a shipyard building wooden boats, but it was then bought by Henry Scar, who then produced iron and steel ships, until 1932, when the yard was taken over by Richard Dunstan. A little later, we'll see exactly where that shipyard was. Chalk quarrying was a major industry at Hessel, and into the 20th century, quarries can still be seen in the west of the town, the largest being the Humber Bridge Country Park, which is a popular tourist attraction. Part of it is known as Little Switzerland. The major 2007 floods had a direct effect on this part of the East Riding. Torrential rain hit the northeast of England and 100 millimetres of rain fell in a few hours. Several people died across the affected area and the first fatality occurred here in Hessel, giving it a piece of unwanted history. Demographics wise, Hessel has a population density that's very, very high. Its residents are tightly packed inside an area that's only 5.7 square kilometres. The population density, therefore, is 2,685 per square kilometre. Although mostly white British at 97.1%, there's a decent sized Asian community here. The average price for a house in the town weighs in at around £217,000. Hessel has a lot of amenities. I'd be here all day if I tried to go through them all. All the ones you're about to see are either in or around the square or close to the town centre, having passed by them on my walk. 
The main shopping areas I've grouped into a little montage so you can get a feel for what shopping is like in Hessel. Hessel All Saints Church is located just off the square and was designated as a Grade 1 listed building in 1967. This is now recorded in the National Heritage List for England. In Anglo-Saxon times, Hessel was the meeting place of the Saxon Hundred. In Norman times, the Manor of Hessel became subject to the Great Lordship of Cottingham. The church was completely rebuilt in the reign of King Stephen. Some of the stonework at the west end of the nave dates from that time. An earlier church, probably Anglo-Saxon, is mentioned in the Doomsday Book. The fact that two important Anglian cysts, or coffins, of chalk stones were discovered in the churchyard near the tower suggests that the earlier church stood to the west of the present nave. Well now, there's got to be a story behind this, surely. If this is a gravestone, how many, uh, how many pyramids do you see in the UK? Amazing. <laughs> Makes you think you're in Egypt. Services are held each Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. next door at Hesel Tower Hill Methodist Church, a church with a strong musical tradition. Singing is led by a restored pipe organ and a strong music group. The Hessel Centre is a library and customer services centre virtually opposite the church. This is certainly not the only communal building in the town though, there's a much grander building on South Lane. That would be Hessel Town Hall. In the early 1890s, Hessel Parish Council decided to commission a dedicated parish hall. Construction work on the new building commenced after borrowings of £3,000 had been secured in January 1895. It was designed in the Victorian style, built in red brick with stone dressings, and was officially opened in 1897. Schools-wise, there's a few. We've already mentioned the secondary school, but there are other educational establishments. Hessel Community Centre on the Horn was originally a school built in Victorian times and it occupies the former boys' side. Virtually next door is the Hessel Children's Centre, listed by Google as a children's club. This is the rear of All Saints Infant School as seen from Eastgate. Hessel Penshurst Primary School is another one of note on Kelston Drive. Hessel has a lot of bus services. There are four main ones you can catch in the square. These are the numbers 57, 82, 150 and 183. Pubs wise, there's a few. We've already seen the haze in the little montage. This one in front of us now is the Marquis of Granby. Virtually next door is the Admiral. There's a couple of bars and restaurants close by too. So Hessel is another place where theoretically a pub crawl could be easy. I'm not suggesting it, honest. There's some clubs too. This one is the ex-servicemen's club on Hull Road. Hessel's main healthcare is provided by the huge Hessel Primary Care Centre on Eastgate. Here's Hessel's job centre, located on the Weir, not too far away from the main town centre park. That park is Tower Hill Memorial Park. This is a lovely large open space just to the north of the main town centre. It's not the only park in Hessel and it's a good thing too because ball games are not allowed on it. Hessel does have a much bigger and wider open space where they are allowed though, King George V playing field. Obviously it was winter here so the flowers and plants here were not in full bloom, but I imagine they look pretty nice in the summer. Most of Hessel's main landmarks aren't located in the town centre, as we'll see very shortly. That said, the War Memorial is one of them, seen here in the churchyard. 
This house was interesting too. Old Beach Cottage is formerly a school and had this blue plaque on the outside telling you about it. It's located on Swinegate. Oh, look what I found. Regular viewers will know what I mean when I say that. This isn't Hessel's only trail of note either. There's a lot here, isn't there? For a small town on the edge of Hull, quite a lot considering. Uh, okay, we're not done with this by a long way yet. And that's because we're having two main walks in this one. We've had a walk around the town centre and now we're going to head down towards something called the Hessel Foreshore because there's plenty of stuff down there to talk about. Hessel Railway Station is the nearest station on the north bank of the Humber to the Humber Bridge. It was opened in 1840 by the Hull and Selby Railway and is four and three quarter miles away from Hull Paragon. The platforms were originally aligned as to serve the outer lines only when the railway was quadrupled early in the 20th century, but following the removal of the outer lines in the early 1970s by British Rail, they were extended out to meet the surviving centre tracks. The station is unstaffed. The main building is still present, but it's not in railway use. These days it's the base for 1860 interiors. The old NER shelter on the eastbound side still exists too, which I found to be pretty fascinating. The station is served hourly in each direction on weekdays with extras at peak times to Hull and Doncaster. Okay, so now I'm crossing over the railway line towards Hesel Foreshore on this bridge. Functional, isn't it? Functional bridge. But there's more than one bridge here. Check out that one. The road you're looking at here is the A63, or to give it its alternative name, the Clive Sullivan Way. It makes its way into Hull city centre to the east and runs under the Humber Bridge to the west. This next area is very sporty in nature. In fact, several sports are represented in this one huge area on the shore of the Humber. First up, we have Hessel Cricket Club. That's just one of the clubs that's based at this park and in this building, the Hessel Rugby Union Football and Cricket Club. The Hull Cycle Speedway Club are one of the major cycling providers in the Hull and East Yorkshire area and they're based here at a specially built international standard circuit on the Hessel Foreshore. Now where I'm walking here is Livingston Road and to my left you can see what just looks like a piece of waste ground. Well there are some buildings in there some of which seem to be abandoned now and uh, even though it looks like nothing, remember that areas like this always used to be something. They had a purpose and they've been abandoned now, but in history, through history, they would have served some kind of purpose. We've seen that before. And where I'm heading now is another similar place to this. In fact, they might even be part of the same thing. That's the dock side, because Hessel was famous for shipbuilding. Here we are at Hessel's largest shipyard, Dunstan's, which built vessels such as Loch Ridden, a roll-on roll-off ferry launched in 1986 and one of the four built for Caledonian McBrain for use in the Hebrides. Dunstan's was closed down in 1994. The location is now used as offices, car sales buildings and a dock for scrap metal and other materials for dispatch to other areas or to be recycled. Richard Dunstan's ship repairs still exists further east along the Humber estuary with activity remaining high. The next thing is just yards away. Hello again Trans Pennine Trail. So where I'm standing here on Jean's Walk is not just part of the Trans Pennine Trail, it's also the beginning of the Yorkshire Wolds Way. 79 miles in length from Hessel all the way to Filey in North Yorkshire. I'm not about to walk that today. The Yorkshire Wolds Way is a national trail just like the Trans Pennine Trail. At Filey Brig it connects with the Cleveland Way, another national trail. In 2007 it celebrated the 25th anniversary of its official opening which took place on the 2nd of October 1982. Here in Hessel where it starts it runs along Hessel Foreshore above this beach which stretches from the dockyards all the way to the Humber Bridge and beyond. This part of the path is known as Jean's Walk 
Named after Jean Hartley, who was a close friend of the poet Philip Larkin, Jean and her husband George published Larkin's first book of poetry, The Less Deceived. Larkin would regularly walk along this path and it may have even been here where he got the inspiration for the line in his poem, The Wits and Weddings, where Sky and Lincolnshire and water meet. So this might just be me that thinks this, but this rugby pitch that we saw a few moments ago, look where the rugby posts are. Imagine kicking a conversion. Where's the ball going to go? <laughs> You're not going to retrieve it out of the Humber, are you? <laughs> Here's the start of the Yorkshire World's Way as marked by this stone, which we pass on our route around Hazel Foreshore. Now, just before we get into the Humber Bridge, look on the beach there. I can see a cross. It might not be very clear with the way the sun's shining on it, but there's a cross just there on the edge of the water. I wonder what that's all about someone drown in the Humber maybe? Let me know as a locals if you know what that's about. Also down here on the foreshore is a beacon which displays a shield. This is to do with the town's twinning. The Humber Bridge was opened by Queen Elizabeth II in 1981. At the time of its opening, it was the world's longest single-span suspension bridge. It links Hessel to the town of Barton-upon-Humber on the opposite side of the river. In July 2017, the bridge was granted Grade 1 listed status. These days, it's no longer the longest, but its length was not surpassed until 1998 with the completion of the Akashi Kaikaio Bridge. It's now the world's 11th longest. There's a stiff breeze coming off the Humber today. Is uh, when I was driving up here, lots of signs on the motorway were saying that the Humber Bridge was closed to high sided vehicles. It appears to be open to them now because I've seen some lorries go across it. In fact, there's one right there that I can see going over the bridge. Uh, also, while I'm walking down here, I noticed this the glass wall. Do you remember the Paul video and how we saw that there? It's here, here as well, in Hessel. Before the bridge, commuters crossed the Humber on the Humber Ferry from Corporation Pier at Hull and New Holland Pier at New Holland, Lincolnshire, or by road via the M62, M18 and M180 motorways. It's worth noting too that there was a hovercraft service named Minerva and Mercury, which linked Hull Pier and Grimsby Docks for a short period in 1969, but that suffered relatively frequent breakdowns. When the bridge is closed, the quickest route around is by crossing the River Ouse near Gaul, which together with the Trent forms the Humber Estuary. Both sides of the bridge were in the non-metropolitan county of Humberside until its dissolution in 1996. The bridge can be seen for miles around and from as far as Patrington in the East Riding of Yorkshire and out to sea miles off the coast. By 2006, the bridge carried an average of 120,000 vehicles per week. Each cable weighs a massive 5,500 tonnes. Fun fact, the cable on the northern span has four extra strands compared to its southern counterpart. The River Humber, of course, has proven to be one of the most unpredictable stretches of water in the world. Located under the bridge, we have Humber Rescue. On Hessel Foreshore, in the shadow of the North Tower of the Humber Bridge, stands Hessel Whiting Mill, a unique example of an early 19th century Whiting windmill. The mill forms part of the Humber Bridge Country Park's Chalk Walk Heritage Trail. Unlike windmills which ground corn and wheat to make flour, Hessel Mill was designed to crush chalk. The exact date of the mill's construction is not known, but based on the design of the tower and the cap and sails which were removed in 1925, it was likely built sometime between 1810 and 1815, when it replaced an earlier horse-powered mill. The crushed chalk was used to manufacture a purified powdered form of chalk called whiting. During the 19th century, this was mainly used as a filler in paint or mixed with linseed oil to make putty. Later, it was used more extensively in the production of rubber, paint and plastics. Chalk extraction stopped in 1970 and the wider quarry area returned to nature. The chalk used in the Whiting Mill would have been acquired from the chalk quarry not too far away. 
The Humber Bridge Country Park Local Nature Reserve was formerly that very same chalk quarry and was developed as a country park following the construction of the Humber Bridge. It consists of a woodland which is mixed species, wildflowers, a spring-fed pond and herb-rich grassland. The park can be explored on several well-signed walking routes. So part of the Humber Bridge Country Park is called Little Switzerland and I imagine it's because it's very hilly, it's a bit like the Alps. I'm walking up the entrance towards it now, up these very large steps alongside the Humber Bridge and the elevation you gain up here is actually quite amazing, it's quite steep this. In actual fact, it's the distinctive chalk cliffs which surround the park on three sides and look like they're snow covered that gave rise to the name Little Switzerland. Okay, it's time for me to make my way back to the car and for you guys to have a picture bit. And today I'm giving you double because Hessel is so large. So here comes 10 pictures with some more information about this town in the East Riding of Yorkshire. Okay, I'm back at Hessel train station over the uh, the railway line we saw earlier with the Humber Bridge in the background that way and uh, the Clive Sullivan Way running that way, the A63. Okay, now one thing I didn't mention when I was talking about the Humber Bridge was the fact that it's a toll bridge. You have to pay, I think it's £1.50 these days to get over it. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do right now to finish this video off because my next parish is going to be over into North Lincolnshire and to get there I have to drive across the Humber Bridge. So let's put the camera on the dashboard and finish this one off by going over one of the most impressive bridges this country has, the Humber Bridge. I've been Andy, this has been the Parish of Hessel, I've been the Village Idiot and I'm out. Thank you.